the year three ALGS championship was insane. Heading in, the storyline centered around TSM and Dark Zero, but long before that question could be answered, we start off with the group stages. To begin champs, APAC South Squad Dreamfire go absolutely nuclear, putting up 78 points, essentially guaranteeing themselves a trip to the winner's bracket. Dupes down, dupes full, Dreamfire are your winners of match number five. This was also notable because Dreamfire probably had the largest fan base at the arena in person, so it was loud immediately. In that same set though, many North American teams started off very slowly with Sentinels, Optic, Disguised, 100 Thieves, and Oxygen all scoring less than 30 points. For those who are unaware, in the group stages, placement is irrelevant. All that matters is the total points you accrue through your three sets. The typical cutoff is around 100 points, so scoring below 30 is a pretty poor start. But over the next few sets, Ascend, LG Chivas, and Blackhand dominate the groups with some big time performances. And along the way, we also get this insane moment from Moist. I don't think they can do anything about this. Oh and my god! He hits the 360! What? what a beast! 360 Kramer shot into the top true combo! Shout out the IGL MT for one of the craziest LAN highlights ever, followed by a Twitter thread where the entire community anointed this man as the greatest human to walk the earth. But in the groups, we need a little bit of the drama, right? So heading into the final set of groups, here's the current standings. Notably, FaZe, Oxygen, and Alliance are at risk of falling to the elimination bracket without a big performance. Near that projected cutoff is J-Links, 100 Thieves, and Kansas City Pioneers who are all holding on for dear life, hoping that this group is a low scoring one. Also heading into this set, wait, who the heck is that on the desk? Oh hey, that was me. And all you watching, thank you for helping make that possible. Absolutely surreal experience. Anyway, on the desk, they asked me to make my prediction and... Jayhawk, you've got a pick also. Why don't you talk to us about the pick, Oxygen Esports. Talk to me about them. Yeah, Oxygen Esports is a team that, as we saw in the last Split 2 playoffs, they're a dominant force. We've seen them actually prove it on land. There was a big question mark going into the last Split 2 playoffs. Can they actually do it? They did it. They handled the pressure. Now the pressure is here again in a way they haven't experienced it before. When you look in the stats of what they've done so far, they are struggling in two areas, kills and on storm point. And that is what Oxygen thrives at. They were dominant on storm point in the split two playoffs. And obviously they're one of the best fighting teams in the world. And so I am expecting them to handle that pressure, bounce back, the BR demons are gonna show up. Well, the first two games for Oxygen do not go according to plan and I may have just cast or cursed them. But then World's Edge happens. Great damage coming out of the Eva 8 and now just trying to use the natural cover that's available. But you now we see he gets oh! guys. They re-engage, but Fnatic they're holding strong. Uberchan gets the armor swap though. Can he win this fight? Can he look for the KP on the down players? That's the question. Fnatic will be eliminated. The sky survived, but it just opens the door for Oxygen Esports. Oxygen gets a big win, but our three teams still need big games. Heading into this final game, Oxygen need 10 or more points, FaZe need 14 or more points, and Alliance need 8 or more points. But for Alliance, things aren't so easy, as they're currently being contested by the Dojo, having just lost two games in a row. Another loss on the contest will be the nail in the coffin for their winner's bracket hopes. So, into the final group stage game we go, and of course, we start off at Thermal Station. No gun, Harajah has no gun. Come inside, Harajah, kill us out of this gun. Yeah, here on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. left side, left side. Terminate this, wait, my door down. Where are you, FF? You good? I'm outside, yeah. Nice one. Nice one, nice one, nice one. Nice, nice, nice. One on the beam, on the beam, on the beam. One high gun, high gun, high gun. One is still high. Can we kill the guy in the base? Can we kill the guy in the base? He's dead, dead, dead. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I don't see him. He's on the beam here somewhere. He's running a platform, running a platform. Can you kill him together? Yeah, yeah. We got him. We got him. Climbing, climbing. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on. 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 He's on top, all the way top. Strike him. Flash, I'm going on him. Kill him. 41 flash, 1 HP. Nice. Let's go, lock it in, lock it in. Alliance clutch up here, but their work is not finished. That's 3 KP, but they still need about 5 or so more points. 
The circle is going to pull between Epicenter, Overlook, and Fragment. This is going to be a great pull for FaZe, but Oxygen and Alliance lack priority, so how they navigate Edge here will be crucial. But this is the rotate. This is the moment here for FaZe. They have Fnatic in front of them, but they should be able to eliminate them, and this might be now a clear run for FaZe. They've cut a straight path towards this end zone. Do you know what is crazy? Is that there is a world where Alliance, FaZe, and Oxygen could all get into oh. the winner's bracket. It would mean that Jaylings and 100 Thieves would fall out, but Alliance have lost one. They're involved in this fight here. They certainly are. Yuki is just trying to anchor for his team, but the pressure is coming in. And now it's down to the long-term duo. Hakis, Yuki, can you win the fight when it matters? The answer is yes. Realize are eliminated, and Alliance live on. Alliance now surpassed Jay Lings and 100 Thieves, which guarantees Alliance in the winner's bracket into the top five. So suddenly, we're looking at Jay Lings and 100 Thieves as TSM. Looks like they're about to go down as Hal tries to hold on strong as the last remaining player. Hal's still alive for now, but he's getting chased down, and this is going to be KP secured potentially for Oxygen Esports. And my, hasn't this just oh! got interesting? Optic Gaming eliminated, TSM eliminated, and it's almost as if it was scripted. Our final three teams, Alliance, FaZe, and Oxygen. And I believe all three of them should have done enough to get to the winner's bracket Wild. at this point. They should be pushing J-Lings and 100 Thieves out of the winner's bracket spots, but they will not know that. They will still think they need a victory to try and secure this. And of course, admins will always make the final call here. This is only the match that I'm doing, but it looks good for all three teams involved in this final circle. You could not write it. Now we have a 3v3 to decide who's going to be our final champion of groups. It's Oxygen Esports versus FaZe. Do FaZe have it available? Yes, they do, but Phonyhead's got to get into a position to use this, or maybe he's going to step through the black, the dark veil, excuse me, to do more damage himself, but he will go down. Frex now left on his own, and Frex needs to win this for FaZe. He gets one, but the question is, can he clutch? Popping themselves, but can he pop some bodies? No! Oxygen Esports. They leave it late here in Birmingham, but boy, what a performance that was those final two games. Oxygen send themselves to the winner's bracket. What an ending. Although the group stage isn't often regarded as intense as the bracket stage, that ending was crazy for three teams on the brink of winners to actually manage to make it in the ways that they did. It was crazy. Now, following the group stages, we have some surprise teams falling to the elimination bracket, including j 100 Thieves, Fnatic, and KCP. Also, only one APAC North team being realized made it to the winner's bracket. With all those open spots, though, we see South America sending two of their three three teams to the winners, as well as APAC South showing up huge, sending five of their seven. And with that, we head into the bracket stage. We begin in the elimination bracket round one. The air is tense. 10 teams are about to have their runs ended. It's do or die. Also, for the first time this land, our sets have now expanded from 6 games to 8. This means the projected cutoff for the top 10 is in the low 40s for points. But heading in, we have a big piece of drama that consumed the morning as Aurora, formerly known as Fire Beavers, are going to play as a duo. Their permanent third, Taskmaster, was not able to get a visa. Their replacement sub, Yuchaka, wasn't meshing well with the team and they tried to replace him and that doesn't go over well, which leads to them playing as a duo. In the actual games, though, we immediately see APAC North come out swinging, with FC Destroy taking game one, followed by three more APAC North teams. KCP, Complexity, and Fnatic also end up making their presence known in the lobby by winning the next four games, respectively. With three games left to go, things begin to get dire for certain teams. Disguised is narrowly in the top 10, with popular dark horses such as Riddle and Go Next struggling. Also notably, j and 100 Thieves, who just narrowly missed out on the winner's bracket, are at the bottom of the leaderboard. Onik is also sitting in dead last. But the next two games, Onik get third and first to launch up to ninth. And so we head into the game number eight, where our main storyline is going to revolve around Go Next and Pulverex. Entering this game, Go Next are sitting at 19 total points and are in 19th place. Pulverex, though, are in a much better position at 11th with 31 total points. We get a circle that's going to finish right outside of Epicenter. Both teams make it deep into the end game, with Go Next picking up a lot of KP until we reach the final four squads. Four teams alive, only one of them guaranteed to be in elimination round two. This is the fight here for Gambari Otazan. 
against Pulverex. Pulverex holding 10th position at the moment. If Geo take them down, they give themselves the best chances ever. But they're taking so much damage as the ring now gets involved. Dog won the last player alive here for Gambadei Otisan. Can they win the fight? It's a 3v1. They will go down as well. As Pulverex might have now done enough. Gambadei out. Oh no! Pulverex down as well! Oh my god! Go, go next! Go next! Go next! Have a chance! If Go Next can win this fight, they can send themselves into elimination round two. But it's FC Destroy that they go up against. Go Next are locked in. Go Next by name. The question is, will it be Go Next tomorrow? Slab Bambino. Missy as well. Win a 3v3. You'll be back on this main stage tomorrow, and they've got them pinned. They've got an L-Star to work with as well. Utility looking all good, and they've got shield swaps. This is looking good for Gonex. Remember where they were, they were in Bambino's 19th place. Down. Bambino has gone down though, it's slab now. Looks for that shield swap, can he even the numbers though? Bambino falling, but the flank here from slab. Can't get that knock, and it's a 2v3. It's a 2v3v1. V FC Destroy will win it. But despite that final game, Go Next end up getting eliminated by FC Destroy due to the Kraber. And that is going to lead to this amazing photo where Pulverex show some respect to their saviors, FC Destroy. Anyway, with that, we unfortunately have 10 teams officially eliminated, including 100 Thieves, J-Lings, Aurora, Disguised, Gambre Otusan, and Go Next. The following day, though, we have the winner's bracket. This wasn't a win or go home set, but the top 10 would go straight into the finals lobby with advancement points. We start off by seeing Sentinels and Rising Star Koifel take a game one win, with Koi getting eight kills, going absolutely crazy in his first ever LAN. But I don't think they have the armor advantage, but those shots oh. will do, dropped! We'll get that first kill, Noct has fallen though. It's a 2v2 here between the two. Skillcake's now left on his own, and Sentinels, not talked about enough, have to take him down to win it. Sentinels come through. Over the next few games, we see other teams such as Blackhand, Dreamfire, LG Jeevas, and Optic really put on a show. We also have this cool moment where Hawkus turns into Legolas. Alliance now finding a bow check to work with as well, and Alliance and Hackis, well, they're having a little bit of fun right here. Lots of damage coming in from the care package weapon. Dreamfire gone, Moist gone, and I tell you what, they might all be going down to Hackis in a few seconds. Sentinels as well, Iron Blood and Realize all four, which leaves us with four. TSM, LG Chivas, Alliance now our last three teams, and TSM starting to push on in towards LG Chivas. Oh, but look at Hackis! Hackis takes down Hal! And those arrows of piercing skin, piercing armor, piercing shields at the moment. In this zone, and you can see Effect wanted to get up close and personal. I love this from Effect. I love this from Alliance. He's seeking an opportunity to spread themselves. But heading into the final two games, things are looking dicey for multiple NA teams like TSM, Dark Zero, NRG, Xset, FaZe, and the Dojo. When we go into game seven on World's Edge, we see the Dojo making a risky call. You see, although they had been contesting Alliance at Thermal in the groups during winners, they actually left the contest to land at Sky East. But Xset had been fighting them earlier and they were having a rough performance in this new POI, so they decided, screw it, let's go back to Thermal on a surprise contest. But Dojo landing over on Thermal Station, they're contesting Alliance! We knew this contest was happening in international scrims, and it was a bloodbath, and all came down to which weapons you were able to grab, and who can get the high ground. A G7 early on, gonna do some favors, but losing Designful will not. His death box doesn't even hit the floor, but up comes Timmy, whipping the Arc Star for a second, and leaving him down a member. Alliance are mirrored though, and with the fact to dropping, it's just up to Yuki and the Spitfire! Oh, because that charge rifle, it can be better used as a shotgun, but the Dojo, the Dojo take thermal! 
and that contest gives them a much needed momentum boost as they begin with 3kp by 2 owing alliance in each of these games. Notably, this is also going to send alliance to the loser's bracket. They were close to making it through to the finals lobby, but those two 20th place finishes get them zero points and eliminate them. But the dojo and many others still have work to do as in this final game, they as well as TSM and Moist are on the outside looking in hoping to pass up multiple teams to jump into that finals lobby, with Dark Zero being the prime target. We reach a point late in game 8 where Dark Zero are in position to make it to the finals lobby, but there is one way in which they can get eliminated. But that requires Moist, the dojo, and TSM to all reach certain point totals in this game to eliminate them. First up, Moist needs to secure a handful of KP and a top 7 placement. 10 HP and a dream, they will fall. Halsey picking up all of those eliminations, have now broken into the top 10. If you're an APAC South fan, this is everything that you've wanted. And they do, so Moist are into the finals lobby. But Dark Zero are still safe, as the dojo would now need to make it into the top 4 with a bunch of KP to surpass them. We see Timmy there as well. Design has fallen. Timmy is playing his life, and they have done enough to get into at least ninth place for now. And yet, with Moist and the dojo still accomplishing what they needed, Dark Zero should still be in. The only thing that can bump them out of the winner's bracket would be TSM gaining another four points to claim the final spot. It's TSM on the low ground that still have to contend with the last member of LG, the last member of Dojo, and the full squad of you know, it's Dreamfire! Plenty of high ground, but they won't have as much of his cover during the next ring. Dojo go down, LG go down, Dreamfire are pushing for the win, but they haven't got enough, even a crack. Can they play this perfectly? TSM, TSM in 10th, they have put themselves into contention for advanced starting points in Dreamfire. Moist climbs from 13th into the finals, the dojo climbs from 16th into the finals, and TSM, like a phoenix from the ashes, climb from 18th all the way up to 5th in that final game to send themselves through to the finals. And when we take a look at the standings, shockingly, Dark Zero, Sentinels, Alliance, NRG, FaZe, and Xset are all headed to the elimination bracket to meet up with KCP, Fnatic, Complexity, and more. Dark Zero, right, coming into this tournament, arguably, it's just, as of lately, it's been TSM Dark Zero, right? How does it feel knowing that these guys got to play another eight games and they have the potential to be kicked out of the tournament and sent home? I think it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild to see them down there. Uh, I think I think they'll make it through. But you know, anything anything can happen. And you know, a couple bad zones, a couple broken mentals, and you know, they could just fumble. Like I, I mean, now after after having their placement now, like you never know. Like it could be like a mental like snowball, and they just like keep performing worse and worse. You know. So they could, I, I would not be surprised now to see them not make it. This may very well be the most stacked elimination bracket Apex has ever seen, holding so many household names with the finals lobby on the line. The first four games of the elimination bracket are on World's Edge and we see NRG dominate. They had struggled in the winner's bracket being very inconsistent, but they made a crucial swap to Watson on these World's Edge games and it worked wonders for them as they cruised to 68 points, guaranteeing themselves a spot in the finals. They were followed by Enterforce 36, Alliance, FaZe, and Element 6, but when we look at the bottom 10, the teams who are facing elimination, we see Dark Zero, KCP, Fnatic, Complexity, and Xset. Storm Point is going to be crucial to see who can make it through to the finals. Would we really see a finals lobby without some of the titans of the competitive scene, including our reigning champions? Oh now my. Dark Zero, oh they're my. already under threat on their rotation. All oh, Zero's had his shields broken, but here comes Jen Burn. Jen. Boy, is he going to have to do some work? Zero and Sony are down though. Jen Burn! His ankles are burning from the fuse. Oh, it's E6. Oh, my God. Dark Zero are gone. Dark Zero are gone. And leave it all up to the final game. But in Game 7, Dark Zero crumbles. Game 7 sees Alliance and NRG once again eat up a ton of points, meaning that in Game 8, things are going to be critical. Dark Zero have to go big. Xset and Fnatic have to go bigger. Please. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah. I fucking believe. Give it all your hardest, bro. We basically tried as hard as possible for this land, so nothing to fucking regret. 
we see a barometer pull and unfortunately Exit goes down, then Fnatic goes down. But Dark Zero are still alive. They're in the top five. They have 36 total points and the finals are within their grasp. There's no way we see the reigning champions not make it through. Zero in trouble. Dark Zero in trouble. Jim Burton. Dark Zero, the defending champions are from the tournament. But Element 6 once again take out Dark Zero and end their run. To end that game though, Pulverex end up facing off against NRG in a final 1v1 where Pulverex is in a win or go home situation once again. If NRG wins the game, then FC Destroy goes through to the finals, but if Pulverex win, then they'll send themselves through. Luckily for Pulverex, Nathan's game crashes and Sweet accidentally launches himself into the storm off his horizon queue and with no health, he dies, giving Pulverex the win, sending them through to the finals lobby. From duo to solo, Pulverex have done it! No way! They do it! They send themselves under 40 points! And with that crazy ending, Dark Zero are eliminated in 23rd, Fnatic are eliminated in 26th, and Xset are eliminated in 28th. It's final Sunday and things are gonna start popping off immediately. With Dark Zero out in this lobby, we have Kansas City Pioneers contesting for both Harvester versus Realize and then Mill versus Dreamfire. Uh, uh, Obli from Realize comes up to me. And he says, GG, nice it. I said, GG. And then uh, he says, Namaste, we will fight. I love contests. So I just look at him in the eyes and I go, I am crazy. <laughs> And he says, I'm crazy too. And although Alliance said they were gonna leave Thermal, game one, we immediately see that Alliance is gonna be contesting Dojo again. Alliance, remember, they were going to give up Thermal Station, what I heard, but Pioneers already in an engagement. Oh, a couple of trades going down early on, and this is a Harvester. Exchange and Zane! The triple take good enough, but the action not overall. Already we're into another contest. I had heard that Alliance were giving this up, but they said, no, this is our temple. This is our playground. But the dojo are showing what they're made of oh. with their fists. Timmy with the PK. Flesh damage already. This is an electric start to our first game here in the AOGS Championships. And once again, it looks like the dojo are in control of Thermal Station. Oh, As Alliance now hold the whole the high ground here. Well, they're gonna send it. They're gonna send it here. Up onto that high ground. Alliance still on that height, but they don't really have the armors to compete. Enemy in Design Pool taking some damage. Timmy and Design Pool now left on their own. It's 1v2 here to claim what this POI will be, maybe for the rest of our World's Edge games. Yeah, this is gonna be a big one for Dojo, and in the two versus one, they shouldn't lose with these shields. But effects just being a nuisance from the high ground, but now the grab lift being back up. It should be a matter of just cleaning up the pieces. Effect goes down, Alliance will fall. And even though it was elongated, it took far too long. <laughs> it's a matter of precedent here for the dojo, as Thermal once again is their home. The dojo takes this game and they're now up 5-1 on contest. Kansas City Pioneers also win the contest for Harvester. And in this first game, we get a pull towards Overlook and Optic starts off with a big win with FaZe coming in second. We head into game two and the dojo again wins the contest versus Alliance, setting the score to 6-1. Meanwhile, over at Harvester, KCP also makes it 2-0 on Realize. And in this game, we see Dreamfire, Ascend, and KCP putting up strong performances. We then head over to Stormpoint with Optic and Dreamfire both approaching match point. But for Dreamfire, they first have to deal with a contest at Mill versus KCP. I like the swap up from Black Hand too. We also had noted, you know, in behind the scenes, they were trying to fight for a POI originally, but here's that 50 50 off the rip to get those pins with the better armor. Exactly. You see Dreamfire landing on the better side. They pick up the purples. That's a big advantage. Not only that, we do see the knocks. Are they going to be able to get a full reset here? They're just trying to get into position. Coming in from the skies on the gravity lift, but also has a knockdown right in front of him to play <gasps> off of from a slight lip. But Optic are here! <gasps> they didn't land a down base. Optic, <laughs> the rogue element, have come in to immediately third party this, and I'm not sure either team expected it. 
Optic decided to third party the contest. In a scrim, this is BM, but in a finals lobby with $2 million on the line, it's smart. These are easy points that Optic was able to pick up, although it did lead to a lot of uh, social media hate, as we'll put it. Speaking of easy points in social media hate though, the dojo decides to get a couple easy ones on TSM. Well, Pioneer's lost one. It looks like Dreamfire lost two. So Dake actually come out no worse way. off, even though right to start with, they were doing better in the contest. Dojo oh. and TSM have already run into each other at wall. Dojo had gotten the advantage off the rip already. They had taken one out from TSM. Now they take Verholz next. There's only one left from TSM. But Dojo taking this by over oh by wall God. and eliminating TSM as the first team to go in the lobby. But back to the rest of the game, Optic wasn't done with that third party contest. In fact, they go on to take another win in game number three. So after three games, Optic has reached match point already. Dreamfire is close had it not been for that rough contest. FaZe, Blackhand, and KCP currently round out the top five. Heading into game number four, all eyes are set on Optic Gaming. Can they take the win as the only team on match point? We're gonna start off once again at Mill with a Dreamfire and KCP contest. Optic actually this time chooses not to third party, but NRG actually lands on the Trident that the mill usually gets, and they're gonna steal it. And this is very important as we're gonna get a deep north pad zone. Both NRG and Optic know where the game winning spot is, and they both have priority. So they're gonna make a race for it, but NRG getting this Trident helps them win that race to that spot. Despite this, Optic does end up making it into the end game and in a final fight against NRG. Dojo eliminates it, top four and Optic are still here. Optic still alive, NRG still alive, three squads remain. It's Ascend, it's NRG, it's Optic, and now it's Jack 2. Optic Gaming might be about to break records. Two squads remaining, it's NRG versus Optic. Everyone in the arena has just become an NRG fan as they want this tournament to continue. Prowler for Nathan. Could that be the difference maker? Sweet has to retreat. Does he have a shield swap? No, he doesn't. Sweet goes down. Not gets the first kill for Optic. Dropped. Tries to move in to clean up the pieces. Optic will fall. NRG clock. NRG steals the win just like they stole that trident and that spot. And although you can't fully hear it through the audio that I just played, being there in person, I can tell you that the entire arena was shaking with NRG chance in that fight because we just wanted to see some more Apex. But Optic isn't done. We're gonna head back to World's Edge for game number five. Optic once again is deep in an end game. Blackhand find a corner, and this is good for Optic. Optic forcing Blackhand and LG a little bit closer to each other. Optic are taking damage here, Dan, and Optic are being forced to retreat and not. He's got no shields. Skittlecakes is down. Dropped is down. But Nox is still alive. The dream is still alive for Optic. But it's looking like this could be the end of the road. The Catwall goes down. It's one more game here in Birmingham as LG going to the final fight against Black Hand. If Black Hand win this, they could get onto match points, but no, LG will deny. They've been holding strong, but strafing flames and he struggled with pressure. Well, now pressure is oh, on no. your shoulders, just as our LG. He gets, oh, he gets down. He gets booted in the face. Now, Optic didn't have their Catalyst wall, so unfortunately, they weren't able to close it out in Game 5 either, with LG, Chivas, and Blackhand going big. Crucially in this game, though, Dreamfire reach match point. Blackhand, FaZe, LG, Chivas, and the Dojo are also all nearing that threshold. Near the bottom of the leaderboard, we're going to see Oxygen, Moist, Alliance, and notably TSM. With Dark Zero eliminated and TSM so far down the leaderboard, it seems like we're going to be crowning a new champion very soon. But then we go to game six, where we have a skyhook ending, and somehow, some way, an old face returns to the fray. Find himself at another top five. TSM, though, they're all by themselves at the moment. There's a fracas behind the wall, but they will strike at the last moment. Phase against TSM. Oh There's only one alive. The Fae from Furrows. Phase get eliminated. And TSM are your game six champions. 
so TSM take the win. But the vibe in the arena still didn't make it feel like that was that impactful of a result. Optic and Dreamfire are already on match point. In that game, although TSM won, Black Hand Phase and LG also now reach match point, and we're heading into game seven back on Storm Point. But wait, there's no way. TSM just won a game, and now they get a wall pull? TSM close it out, winning back-to-back -back games. And not only that, but they, as well as the dojo, have hit match point. Going into game eight, we have seven total teams on match point. We head into game eight, and it feels like this is going to be the decider. With this many teams on match point, there's simply no way somebody else wins. The time to end it is now. Somehow, some way, I don't know, man. I TSM take the win by winning three games in a row. Arguably the greatest LAN win of all time from any team. Going from 16th to champions in three games. Wow. Thank you so much for watching. Obviously, I didn't go too in depth into specifics on how teams were able to do what they do. We're gonna have TSM's episode of The Reset coming up next, followed by a few more of the teams that popped off at LAN. We'll see who comes after TSM. Shout out to all my Patreons. They make life so much easier when it comes to being able to make all this content. If you wanna find out how to support me even further, click the link in my description to check out my Patreon and I haven't really advertised this that well, but I do the interviews for these videos with the teams and I'm hoping to do so with all the teams moving forward. And I can't include like 90% of the interview because obviously for the sake of time. So I only use the best answers, but if you want to see the full thing, I do post the full unedited interviews on my Patreon. So if you want to support me even further, like I said, link in the description.